the skeletons for the orcs. Orcs being lucky, killing most of the skeletons. Uh, we're gonna try to heal some orcs. Very good. And replace archers like this. I think skeletons should be very much forced to, to hit the orcs at this point because there's nothing else they can do. Now we're gonna go ahead and mop up the remains with the orcs. Very good. Okay, okay, very good. We got them. We had casualties. We did not. No, that is great. We had 335 experience earned for the victory. We didn't have any casualties. We killed 19 skeletons in total. I am sorry as I do not know the exact names of these creatures. I'm recording. Now we're gonna go ahead and move towards the... Um, how the hell is it called? The gates of the underworld, right? To move backwards, to move back to where we started, outside. Now we're gonna go ahead and try to kill these ghouls as they approach our lines and form something defensible. <laughs> Again, Orc is gonna take the main uh, main part in this defense due to their very, very strong ability to deal damage in close combat. Hell, I do rely on Orcs a lot, don't I? <laughs> gonna go ahead and attack them. Okay, got some of them. Did not lose anyone, we have additional morale, they're gonna attack again, and now we're gonna use Sisters to heal our forces right here. Yeah, well, we didn't have any casualties at this point, so it should be fine. Now we're gonna use our sentinels to go ahead and attack the ghouls. And if we don't deal with them, the archers will be able to do the rest the next turn. We have this line which shows us who's gonna walk next turn, right? Next turn within combat. So we can, by looking at this line, we can analyze who's gonna walk next and plan our actions accordingly. Okay, you're here earned. 326 experience. Creatures lost, zero. Creatures defeated, 16 ghouls. Very good. That's a success. We're gonna go ahead upstairs from the underworld and we will be pretty much forced to fight with Togro. Which is gonna be an exciting storm of the castle. <coughs> we have Togro and a lot of his forces. A lot of his forces. And we have our hero Slava and a lot of his forces. We'll attempt the besiege the castle, which will not be the easiest thing we ever did, but it's a good opportunity for you to see how does it work, how does it operate, and how does it look. So we have two main difficulties in this storm. Yeah, the fireballs of Torgral, which kill our sisters, and two enemy ranged creatures, Succubus and Breeder. These two creatures will be the main, I the main creatures we want to demolish before we do anything else substantial. I'm gonna go ahead and focus on Sukube at this point because breeders don't die as fast and it's gonna take a while to kill them. They have a lot of hit points and they just. <laughs> they're very, very strong creatures as they are. Also, added that they're, you know, ranged creatures, it's an additional problem. Okay, we deal, dealt with one of the ranged creatures. Now, our idea, because enemy doesn't have any towers, we don't really have to storm anyone at this point. We're just gonna try to go ahead and form tight formation around our um, sentinels, am I correct? Yes, sentinels. That's right, that's sentinels. Sentinels are awesome. That's the idea. We hide behind sentinels all of our ground forces in order not to get devastated by the breeder's attacks. Now our ballista, acting on its own free will, tries to demolish the enemy, uh, enemy fortifications. Ogrel just loves to attack our units and doesn't deal enough damage by doing that. Okay, Breeder essentially does the same thing and attempts to kill our ranged units. We're gonna go ahead and hit the Breeder with our hero attack. Now, using our Marksman, we will attack Breeder as well. Marksman attack pierces through enemy units, hits the Hound, and keeps flying through all the way to the Breeder. That makes this unit very effective, especially if the enemy heroes are lined up. Which, which won't happen every now and then. 
However, if you're lucky enough and it happens, you're gonna be able to deal some additional damage. Now we're gonna use orcs to mop out these hellhounds off of our archers. They have unsurpassed damage, thus they will be able to deal with them. We're gonna use some heal, which is not really useful, but we'll still attempt to use it on orcs. We're gonna heal some orcs. Very good. Now we use sentinels to do nothing, we're just gonna defend with them. Enemy slowly tries to throw one force at a time at us, keeping us busy in the front. For some reason, I don't understand this logic. Especially judging that their hero is a mage, right? He could deal a lot of damage from the range. So they kill the sisters. Okay, not nothing to defend anymore. Or the archers. So now we we'll lose, we we'll lose most of the squad of another archers, of other archers. So we're just gonna finish off this breeder and not care so much about casualties anymore. We're gonna wait with these archers, just in case if we will be able to have a clean shot on anything. Right. Our archers over there will attempt to kill Demented right here. Demented is a very serious unit to deal with, and we're gonna have to try to deal with them faster. I'm gonna go ahead and attack it. Now there's no point to cover units behind Sentinel's shield because there's no ranged units anymore. Hero attacks cannot be covered from by shields on Sentinel, so it, it makes it it makes it useless to hide behind the shield anymore. We're just gonna go ahead and mop the scout down. Very nice. Okay. Now that we're able to keep fighting at them, we're just gonna go ahead and fire at their forces. They're gonna throw at us something else this time. I I suppose it will be maniacs. Yeah, because these ones are casters. <laughs> Makes sense, right? Makes sense. Gonna go ahead and try to kill them. As they're not approaching it yes, as yet. Notice how we deal a really highly diminished damage when you fire over the in this case through the wall, right? The damage is diminished by gigantic magnitude because of the way it works. Uh, it's not effective it's not so effective to fire on an open field and through the combat for, um not combat fortification, the um, fortification of the city. It's not the same result. Gorgul is just on his lucky day and he's just keep keep pushing us with his spells. However, the physical might of our hero allows us to kill three units per turn three units per turn for out of his army, right? Not counting our archers, you know, minimize damage. Now we're gonna go ahead and put orcs on the front. We're gonna go ahead and put sentinels close to them to support them in case they get attacked. We're just gonna wait until they open the door. <laughs> it takes a whole lot of time to demolish basic fortifications, I have to notice. It takes much more time to demolish it. And here is 5, it will be like chuck bomb and it's done, right? Here it takes so much time to demolish basic wall, right? And the catapult keeps firing in the random directions. It might take a while, I guess. He got some more of them. They can actually attack it. Oh, I never knew that. They can attack Siege Gate. Well, that wasn't very effective, was it now? Minus one. It's gonna take a while to destroy it like this. Let's go ahead and see what they attempt to do. Okay, they keep just, they keep demolishing our archers. However, this will not help them very much as we approach to the capturing of the fortress. No, we, we just keep being persistent, we will win eventually because of our essential, essentially numbers, right? It's not very possible for them to hold off at this point because I don't see any powerful Bogrel spells. Okay, one of the walls got demolished. Now it's gonna force them to move out. Which they do, and they get destroyed by this. They also are aligned in one line, I think. That means that both Tormentor and Maniac will be able to hit at the same time. However, uh, because of the number of our marksmen, it's it's ineffective and it's actually useless. This attack was very, you know, not very useful. Now we attempt to destroy the front gate. They keep damaging one point. I think that's about numbers of attacks. It's not about them how how sturdy it is actually. It's just we see it has five. Yeah, it has nine hit points. Each hit point is represented by one attack. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and finish this combat. After Togoro cast his stupid spells on us, killing most of our marksmen, attacking our orcs, orcs gonna be able to move it down. Okay, so we had 
I would say reasonable casualties, considering that we fought a very strong hero and very strong army, right? And storming fortification, we lost. We gained 1,416 experience. We lost one sentinel, four crossbowmen, four sisters, one orc, nine marksmen. On and the enemy, on the contrary, lost 20 maniacs, 10 hellhounds, five demented, six succubus, three uh, tormentors, and two breeders. Whew. I remember this. Great. So we get achievement, which is called Implosion 1. Dealt 1000 points of instant damage with a hero ability. I did not see that coming and I did not remember doing it. With a hero ability. Instant damage. Ah, in total, I guess it is. We get 50, uh, 50 points to spend in the shop. The Altar of Wishes. Good. Now, the map is pretty much done. So we go ahead in the mausoleum. And that's an Inferno city, right? It, it's not very useful to us because we cannot... Um, having an Inferno would be like black and white. That's a complete contradiction. Inferno does not like to work with Heaven, traditionally in the Heroes of Might and Magic. And... And... Um, on the other hand, Inferno feels has exactly the same feelings. But, thanks to the special uh, switch to c convert town, convert town window, we can spend some of our resources, which is actually right now basic resources and some gold, we will be able to convert Inferno Town to the Heavens Town. To the to the Heavens Town. We will be able to utilize much more efe efficiency from this from this action. And we can, uh, we can we will actually be able to support much higher army now that now that we have two cities. But it won't be really useful because we don't need we don't need uh, more army because we actually finished the, this mission. So we get 1,000 experience to might power to our hero Slava. Very good. And thus it ends. Strange that the priests taught me. Not good. Kral, how is Ula? Strong spirit. Why don't you? Okay, you're gonna skip it, not to spoil you anything. <laughs> I think I spoiled enough. That's the end of our hero coming to give you feedback on what's happening. I'm just gonna go ahead and skip it again. And so, when we complete this mission, the first tutorial mission, we get. One artifact, right? Sword of the Griffin, Dynasty weapon, which is which is yellow. It, it it goes to your main hand and requires might affinity, which means you're supposed to be, uh, how's it called, a knight, right? The hero who uses it's supposed to be a knight. Might affinity would be affinity to deal physical damage and to resist against physical damage, as opposed to mage's magic affinity, as to deal magical damage and resist against magical damage. As a sword, it will progress with the level of our dynasty. And get new abilities. Just look at that. Level 1 plus 3 leadership, level 2 Griffin Heart, level 3 plus 5 Destiny, level 4 Griffin Roar, and level 5 Griffin Fury. Right. So, as we progress in the guild, oh, oh guild, as we progress in our dynasty and your profile and you get experience, as you up move to next levels, you will be able to improve your dynasty weapons and they will be improved automatically, I suppose. Very good. Weapon Master. So we get. Action completed, plus 10 Uplay points. Weapon Master 1, General, obtain Sword of the Griffin. 10 Uplay points. Okay, let's go ahead and close it. Achievements unlocked. Back to basic. Aspirant, Veteran, Champion. Whatever the hell it means. Complete a campaign map reaching at least Champion. Rank like award depends on your total score and difficult level. Veteran, Aspirant. Okay, so we reach the Champion level and we got back to basic because we complete the prologue. We get 50, 50, 100, 250. Uh, 550 points in total. Okay, that shows now all the achievements we had unlocked. Right, it's quite a lot of achievements. It says the total score, damage dealt, controlled by you, the most damage dealt, the most damage received, time spent, most le most and least used, most used, least used, then the favorite target, the one we fought the most, then expertise, and most efficient, the crossbowman it was right. Rank hero, right, the same score. Okay, great. Feeds, and we have we have all these kind of statistics you can look on yourself, which are really detailed. And I like how it fits. Unlike in Heroes of Mind and Magic 5, it fits not only on one window. It's very informative, very interesting. It's fun to see what you used more, what's more, what was more effective, what was consuming the damage the most, and so on. So we're gonna go ahead and click next map. Next map. Great. So now we complete the first mission of the campaign and we go ahead to second the Emperor's Will. I shall stop the recording at this point. I thank you very much for watching this introductory to Heroes of Might and Magic 6. It's not exactly introduction, it's just, you know, the first playthrough of first tutorial with many details. If you liked what you was hearing to and seeing, 
please comment, like and subscribe, share with your friends, whatever it would help me, I would love it very much, and come back for more content, of course, because I certainly will go ahead and make more about Heroes of Mind Magic 6. Also, please, let me know um, your constructive critic, right? What would you like to see more? What would you like to see more? This kind of playthrough, like, with many details about the gameplay mechanics compared to previous games, or just, or maybe you would like to hear the story of Heroes of Might and Magic, which I think I can, <laughs> I can collaborate in one, like, comprehensive, uh, I don't know, half an hour video, something like this, or maybe you would like to see the you know, multiplayer features, what you would like to see, you know, I would like, I would love to know about it, and I would love to indulge, to provide the, the content to support that. Right. Thank you very much for watching again. Uh, see you next time, and bye-bye.